Milk paint is a unique way to update old furniture pieces or just give new ones a rustic farmhouse finish. If you're interested in how to use milk paint on furniture, just keep watching. All right, here's the dresser we're painting with milk paint. When we bought it, I didn't realize how bad of shape it was in. When I got it home, I started to see all of the things and I could smell smoke on it. I just should not have paid $80 for it, but oh well. Anyway, I bought this thing over three years ago and slowly worked on it as I had motivation to. Last year, I removed the veneer from most of the drawers. Some of the veneer was glued on extra well and it was an absolute pain. I filled in the other chips, sprayed everything inside and out with a couple of coats of clear shellac to seal the smoke smell and found this little love note from someone that someone tried to paint over. <laughs> and I took apart some of the drawers and then I lost steam and I put it away until just recently. Then I cut new wood for those drawer bottoms and put the drawers back together. We attached the top to the dresser and filled in more of the damage with Bondo. It was all so much work and I wanted to give up multiple times, but I also didn't want it to just go to the landfill, so here we are. With all of that out of the way, here is what it finally looked like when we were ready to paint it. I chose milk paint for this dresser because it creates an old, worn look, exactly what this piece is old and worn out, but in good enough condition to be of use. So I ravaged through my stash of powdered milk paint and mixed some colors together. Milk paint comes in a powdered form, but all you have to do is add water to it to turn it into paint. Mix one part water to one part milk paint powder, mix it together really well or shake it up and then let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. So the powder can disintegrate and so it can all just come together to make a thicker paint. But once it's mixed up, it doesn't keep for very long. So I only mixed up half of the batch or what I thought I would use that day. One other thing about milk paint is that it is known to create a chippy look if you don't paint it on raw wood. If you don't want it to chip, just mix some extra bond into the mixed up milk paint. Technically, I think it's like a two to one ratio. So two parts mixed up milk paint to one part extra bond. I swear this stuff is just glue because it smells like Elmer's glue but I can't confirm that. Then I let the paint sit for 15 minutes and then I painted it onto the dresser with a round zebra paintbrush. I love zebra paintbrushes because they're affordable and they come in all different sizes that make it easier to paint furniture. My favorite brush is the round brush and these brushes will last forever if you clean them out after each project. When painting milk paint, I like to brush it on and then go back over it in long brush strokes. Milk paint can have a lot of variations, so going back over it with long brush strokes helps minimize the variations in the pigments. The first coat went on super thin. That's partly because of the bonding agent, but also milk paint tends to look really bad on the first coat. But the second coat should have full coverage or almost full coverage. It also dries pretty quickly. I painted the dresser with two coats before walking away from it for the night. When I came back the next day, there were two places where the veneer was lifting. So I chipped those off and filled them with wood filler. I had to touch up those spots where I had wood filled I put some extra bond over them to help the paint stick and then I painted over them just to find that one of them was chipping again. So I had to sand it all again and try to touch it up again. Sometimes milk paint really has a mind of its own and it doesn't like to stick to where the wood fillers are. But 
I kept at it and it kept chipping because of the damaged veneer right there. So I ended up just scraping off the veneer on that whole entire area and then painting it all again, which was kind of tricky because I didn't have much paint left and it doesn't have much of a shelf life, but I finally got it all fixed. Then I replaced the missing drawer stops and sanded all of the paint to smooth it out and blend the variations in the pigments. Milk paint is super porous, so it has to be sealed. It can be sealed with wax, water-based polyurethane, or hemp oil. This time I sealed it with some wax. Water-based polyurethane, from my experience, will make the milk paint chip even more, and if that's the look you're going for, then that's what I recommend to use. Then I added the new hardware and put some keyhole covers on. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button so you can see more of our videos. Thank you so much. All right, here is what it looked like before and here's what it looks like now. It's rustic and totally gives a nod to its history, right? Even though I tried to prevent chipping, there are still a couple of very small spots where the paint still chipped. Overall, I love the look, but I'm kind of still not sure about it. I'm almost wondering if I need to repaint it with something not milk paint. Anyways, what do you think? Would you ever use milk paint on your furniture projects? Let me know in the comments. Are you confused and not sure where to start with your furniture makeover? Don't worry, I got your back. Click the link in my comment to download our free painting checklist so you can paint your furniture as if you hired a professional to do it.